Hello again, listeners, and welcome back to the Kotu Classic FPL Podcast. I'm your host, um, Bruce, and as usual, my co-host, Chama. Chama, it's been a while. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> been a long, long time. A lot of things has happened now, you know. In a, a lot in of last, things have happened. The last like, few weeks, you know. <laughs> but it's but, good. Yeah, there's a lot of change. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, a lot of change has happened. A lot of, um, I think, a few... Or one postponement or two postponements actually. Um, but we'll talk about all of that. We are recording game week nine preview today. So um there's a lot of discussions to be had. So before we even um uh go into that, let's just start with uh, a quick recap of what happened the last time we recorded. <laughs> so um let's jump into game week. Is it six? Because game week seven if you don't know, was postponed. So, yeah. therefore, um, we'll talk about game week six and some of the results. Yeah. Jama, just a quick recap. Um, What are the results that jumped out to you or the markets that you watched in game week six? Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, I think we recorded five, like game week four. Five, six? We did not record. Yeah, because game week five and game week six, we combined the, 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 the that, that mm-hmm. those two. So, it means... Yeah. Preview yeah. the preview for those two, yeah. But, but but anyways, the the the, the latest game week that uh or the latest uh week of round of fixtures that happened was game week six, and um there were some very interesting results. Of course, Ivan Tony mm-hmm. was the got the headlines. Of course, Man United got a very big result against Manchester United against Arsenal, your biggest rivals. But Ivan Tony was the was the big big player in that week, and those players I who heard. had him in their team we are festing yourself and and the likes. You guys were who are flying with the hat <laughs> because it was, it was a low scoring game week, you know. I very think, low scoring, yeah. Very I low scoring. I think we all scored below forty. Uh, most of the managers, myself included. Mm-hmm. So it was really a low scoring game week. So if you had Ivan Tony, you were fasted. And he scored a very wonderful, wonderful hat trick in that game. It's it's funny because when you look at most teams, all the back line, the expensive defenders all had one point, one, one, yeah. one, one, one midfielders, one, one. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's great. Like, and the Liverpool yeah. one, right? We got the clean sheet. Trent got mm-hmm. the one point. Robo got the one point because they, they, they substituted in the 59th minute or something like uh, that. So, yeah, it was it was crazy. Uh, I don't think any defender got a got, got a clean sheet. Like any team got a clean sheet. With Cancelo games. also one one. You know, um, James also. I think uh, Chelsea. Yeah, uh, Chelsea. James won. I they, think he got a yellow card. And um, Chelsea. They won, but then they they considered a goal too. So. And there was a very yeah. controversial game. You remember? We didn't even talk about that. That was the. Uh, yeah, we didn't talk about yeah. The West Ham yeah. game, that was the VAR decision that Chelsea, that West Ham should have equalized in the final minute. Oh, yeah, but they did, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of things have happened, to be honest. We a lot of things yeah. happened, yeah. It seems like an inch ago. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch the game, but I saw um, on, on social media um, or in the group or WhatsApp, yeah. the Chelsea fans, uh, the, the Chelsea fans, obviously, they always complain, but they didn't say anything because I saw parts of the game. Yeah. And I think, number one, the, the game went on for too long, number one. Like, this it should have ended, right? Yeah. But then... The, the the foul at the in question didn't have anything to do with the goal. To be honest, I saw the foul. Yeah. You know, it wasn't even a foul. To be honest, you know. Yeah, it was. And he missed the ball completely, and then the. Ah. The goal, the goal called Mendy. Goals. I think Mendy bought yes. that foul. He bought that foul by staying on the ground. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it is what it is. I understand why the referee gave it because there's the contact. Like if if you scrutinize it properly, you will say it's a, but that's not enough to be a foul, you know? There are some, not it's always not, every yeah. contact is a foul. Football is a contact sport. Mm-hmm. So sometimes they have it, to... Yeah. For me, I feel like it's a, it's an error on the on the goalkeeper's part. Yeah, you definitely, understand? It's an error, like, the and then, like, exactly. It's not like they fouled him and then he he, he made the mistake. He made the mistake and then, like, uh, in progress, the progression, yeah, which happened. was normal, yeah. And, you know, so... But anyways, it's one of those ones that it, it, it went their way. And yeah, and even, I, I, I think actually the the P, PGMOL, that is the Premier League Referees Association or something, they kind of apologized. Mm. They apologized. I think. Yeah, they, uh, they, they said they made, yeah, they made a mistake. Yeah, 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 they have to. They have to release a statement for that. To be honest, it was crazy, right? And that was the like, only big yeah. this is big, big VAR call that week. I think some people were 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 hoping that Van Dijk also get a red card uh, in the Liverpool fixture. Oh yeah, I think I heard yeah, about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me, that was that was not enough for me. Um and. Uh, uh, Newcastle too. There was a similar situation where the goalkeeper also did a mess of things. They considered like Crystal Palace keeper considered a goal or something like that. Yeah, there was a lot mm-hmm. of bad VAR calls. I think even the Man United game there was one, the Ericsson one. But the, Arsenal, Arsenal, the, Arsenal, the first goal, the Arsenal, Arsenal yeah, goal. Yeah, Martinelli scored a goal and they like yeah, yeah. But it was they took a it foul. back. It was a foul. Yeah, but to be honest, 
I, I might be biased as a Man U fan, but when you when you watch it, like in quick succession, when it happened, it didn't seem like a foul. But when you break it down, you know, you can see there was uh, contact, the, the, yeah. the feet, and then, you know, but that's that, that's the argument, you know, like with VAR, if, if you break down everything like frame by frame, yeah. most times it's going to be a foul. It's good. Yeah, there is something. something you know, there, football yeah. before used to be like, you know, the, the, the eye test, yeah, like if it's not a foul at first yeah. glance, then it, it's, it's okay to go. Yeah. So, all these small nuances, like they 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 are up, you know. Well, I mean, I'm not but I but I but I agree. I I I think uh, when it comes to the VAR, um, mm -hmm. if the scrutiny is too much, that's why they say obvious and and like mm -hmm. clear and mm -hmm. obvious error. If the clear, if yeah. the foul is very clear that like everybody will say this is a foul, then that is worthy of a foul that is to be taken back. Mm -hmm. But if the, it is not that the case, where this section say maybe it's a foul, this section say no, it's not a foul, then that is not clear and obvious because there is some, you know, disagreement. So those kind of situations, I think they should let them go. But mm -hmm. yeah, it is, it's difficult to decide that, to be honest. It's difficult to decide what is clear and obvious, which is the biggest that, problem. That's, 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 the biggest that's problem. what football is all about, to be honest. It's not supposed to be broken down to the, the minute detail that even you yourself in the eye, like with your eye test, you can't determine that, you know. So it's yeah. like, just let some of these things go and let football be fun. You know, but when it comes to like the, the goal line technology, that one is like something that I really appreciate because yeah, that you know, one it's is happened perfect. before. <laughs> it's that perfect. perfect. But the that VR, that one is perfect. It's, you know, the last season when they were calculating the thing to millimeters yeah. offside and those, I was like, what is this? Is this yeah, it's <laughs> a crazy. Project? It's oh. crazy, right? <laughs> but but anyways, yeah, okay. anyway, we, we have some interesting results. Yeah, like Brighton, after winning 5-2 against Leicester, they lost the coach, uh, which is a big, big loss for them, I believe. But they are also flying in the league uh, at the moment. Uh, how do you think the 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 uh, portal leaving them will affect them? And Chelsea, of course, we can talk about Chelsea later. But uh, I think we'll talk about um uh, um okay to yeah. Chelsea. Let's talk about for, for Brighton. I I think um you know we the way they play is one of uh, the 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 ways I've really admired is because they play a system based football. You know, yeah. they can put anybody yeah, system -based team, in yeah. that position and then they, they, the, 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 the system will work. And also yeah. their scouting. The yeah. scouting used to be what Leicester used to do before. They used yeah. to scout players beforehand. So when they sell, they already have a replacement. Yeah. So they never have any issues. So Leicester used to do that, but I don't know what happened. Now it seems like uh, something has broken down. Now they have to be scrambling to find players. And it seems like the coach, you know, doesn't know what to do or is out of ideas. But I think Brighton... Do they, did they already assign a coach right now? They already have a new uh, coach. Right now, they kind of uh, have some interim coach, including Adam Lalana and some assistant coach or the the, the like the youth team coaches. So I think Adam Lalana is the coach. <laughs> is the interim. Wow. He's, also, he's also a manager. In the, he's also a player. Yeah. So yeah. I don't, I don't think they have person, enough right? time. I don't think they have enough enough time to 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 find the replacement. Yeah. It was 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 a shock because if I was Potter, obviously I'll take it. It's a big job big opportunity I'll, I'll take it obviously but i don't think they'll be on the same level again it might take them a while to get back to where they used to be because they need to find a replacement somebody who has the same ideology as uh, potter as potter to, to, it will be very to, hard to, right? to, to come back into the team yeah and continue what they started yeah and the worst thing is he went with the with whole backroom staff at least oh, really? i was an assistant coach yeah he went with the whole like the, everything like a lot of like there, there was a whole team that left so if you see the people, like up to five or six, six of them left, which means like that yeah, that's going to affect. It's, it's gonna definitely going to affect, gonna affect the team. Yeah, 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 it's going to affect the team. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, let, let's they see, don't let's have see, a game this weekend. They don't have a game this weekend. They were supposed to play Crystal Palace, mm -hmm. but that game was already postponed because of I think some strike. The train system in England they were striking even before the Queen uh, passed. And now the next game is gonna be Liverpool. That's when we will have the first chance to see how they do, how they how they bounce back or how, how they, they react. Back. But they I, 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 I feel, yeah, I I think it's gonna to be tough for them, man. Um, they have the players, but like I said, if the system has been in place, I think they will just continue with what Potter was using before. You yeah. know, just, just keep it like that, and then try to survive until the end of the season. Or if they can even do appointment now, maybe just give them a few weeks and they identify who the best replacement would be. And they can just hire the person, but I don't think they they had they had enough time to plan this, which is unfortunate. But you know, yeah, yeah it's unfortunate. But yeah, about mm. Potter himself, we have to discuss about him later uh, down in the show. Yeah, about, about him and uh, Chelsea. And about like him and Chelsea, team. how he's gonna yeah. impact in that team. Um, I mm. think he's a very good manager. But we we'll talk about that. And finally, yeah. United Arsenal. 
That was the big game of the week. And um, the big like, I think I was not surprised personally. I think I expected okay. Manchester United, even though Arsenal had the 100% record, I was always backing Manchester United to win this one. And it's always like this. Arsenal played very well, to be honest. They should be proud of their performance in that game. But yeah, it's just hard <laughs> to play against Manchester United for Arsenal. I the thing is, um, it's always been like that with, against Arsenal. Yeah, Arsenal fans. I was I was away, you know. I traveled, and then my my friend who was an Arsenal fan was worried about this result. He was telling me, you know, you guys always whenever how how good we play, you guys always try to always like spoil our runs. Or I was like, I don't worry, man. It's Manchester. You know, I was thinking uh, Arsenal. They're so good this season. There's no way we can beat them. But he was yeah. worried, and he was like, <laughs> so when I saw the result, I was like, okay, I think you're right. He said, I told you, there's something about Manchester United coming to rain on Arsenal's credit all the time. You know. Yeah. But um, the thing is, they played like the the team, uh, the bigger team, yeah, you know, yeah. like because of because of our deficiencies in the players that we have, we had yeah. to play this counter attacking football. That's what we have been playing yeah. because the coach realized that the type of football he wants to play, like the team is going to take the team a bit of time to get used to that type of style, but playing from the back and you know, and building from the back. But we had to revert to. Because the first two games, remember, we scored all those own goals we were, we were, <laughs> we were scoring. Brentford was scoring us for. It didn't even work. So we had to start, you know, um, uh, distributing the ball overhead and, and things like that to change the style of play. Eventually, when we are confident enough, we we'll start integrating the playing from the back, you know, all those touches, the, the whole team touching the ball before we score. Yeah. It's going to come. But for now, yeah. we just need to survive and get the results, build the confidence. You know, it, it's a good confidence booster, to be honest. And yep. Yeah. Have your 100, 100, 100 pound, is it 100 euro uh, player signing, scoring a goal? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah, it takes the pressure like, off your player to perform. So uh, that's good. I'm happy Anthony, what do you make of him? What, what do you make of him? He celebrated that goal like, like he, will, he, he has been at United for 100 years. <laughs> I didn't watch the game. I didn't watch the game. I saw the goal. But then the type of player he is, is somebody that understands the way the coach plays. That's why the coach really wanted him. Like yeah, if you have an, a, a, yeah. Yeah, a player who understands the coach's tactics. Yeah. You know, it helps the team to adjust. And if you watch his interviews also, he's somebody who's really excited to be a United player. He's not there just there because, oh, it's a big team. He just wants to come and, you know, he, he likes being in the in, in United and being with the coach. And he's happy that, you know, he's gotten this opportunity. So, yeah, I think he's going to do big things. Yeah, yeah. Know, and, finally, um, my, and finally, my boy, Ras, Rashford, you know, before the season started, I... I, I, I think he, he didn't start the season before, well. Right? He didn't score You're the right. goals. He started the season well. He didn't score the goals, but the numbers were there. He was getting into the right position. It was just a matter of time. And now, yeah. things are getting rosy for him. But unfortunately, he got injured in the game. He had an hamstring. And, um, but thank God, the international break might help him recover from that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then we take it from there. But yeah, I was really impressed with his performance, to be honest. To be honest. I think you were I think you were. You were right. Yeah, the the coach back backs him. That's the thing. It's like it's a, it's a big call because Ronaldo is a big player, and benching Ronaldo is like it's, it's a big call from coach. And he was adamant that you know Ronaldo didn't have a preseason, and the way his style of football is, you need to have a preseason because the fitness level is is, is is demanding enough. You need to be fit to play. And Rashford has been really good since preseason and making the runs and you know those style of play and the front three really integrate well. My yeah. thing is when Marshall gets back, how is that going to like? How is that going to work? Because Marshall was playing pieces in pretty well, you know, he held the ball, and so how is that going to work? That's my my thinking now. It's good to have these headaches as a coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, de de definitely. You are playing in many competitions. You are playing in the Europa, mm. so I think uh, we'll it's see. just a matter of rotating the, the rotating the players, and sometimes mm. rarely you have all these players fit at the same time. So yeah, but it, it's a good it's a good headache to have to have all these players fit. But I think he's playing himself into a position where he's yeah. undroppable. Yeah, he can be a starting and, uh, right. Yeah, he's very... Yeah, like, he got the assist for Anthony, of course. That was a very good power ball. And then he scored the, the other two goals against Arsenal. For him, to be honest, he's very good when it comes to these games, these big games. He's a big game player. Big when games, it comes to yeah. Arsenal, Man Liverpool, I'm always worried about him that he might cause us a trouble because, almost every, every mm. other time. So, but yeah, I'm happy to. It's, he, he he cannot just be a bad player overnight, you know. It was just a matter of last <laughs> yeah, year. He had, true, a, bad, he, he had a, a very rough yeah, season. Yeah. And FPL decided... It's the confidence to, level. It's the confidence level. Yeah. Because apparently, it's coming to light now that what Rang, Rangnick, uh, the former coach, wanted him to do, he wasn't comfortable playing that type of way. You understand? And this is, this is the, this comes down to the coach. Like, if you have a coach 
you have a style of play, you come and you say, okay, this is how I want my team to play. But if you start that one or two, three games, you see that it's not going to work because the type of players you have don't really complement your style of play. You have to change. Yeah, definitely. That is what how how you know like, whether a coach is good or not. You have to change it as soon as possible to get the results and then build the confidence. Then you can slowly integrate your style of play to the team yeah. that you have. Yeah, You don't just bring you your know, so, the system yeah. and then... Mm-hmm. Like like uh what's his name? Uh the coach right now. He started with a different type of play. He wanted to come and dominate. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Building from the back. Building from the back. But he, he knew that was not gonna work. And then he he adopted very quickly. Which is very a very quickly. good which is a good sign for, 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 for him. Mm-hmm. But yeah, let's 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 wait and see. Um and that's mm-hmm. what do you, what do you think of his prospects of going to the World Cup now? Do you think is he has has he hasn't done himself any harm, right? Was he? He wasn't called, right? Him and he Sancho was, were not he, called. He, he and Sancho for him. Um, he was injured, so you can blame the injury for him not getting the call. For Sancho, he was dropped. So yeah, it's a strange one. I uh, have for I'm I don't, I'm not an English fan, but the, the English coach he kind of have his loyalist and uh, he just picked those. Yeah, players. the the Grealish Grealish hundred million flop was called. <laughs> but for me, honestly, uh, I I know these young players want to play for their country, but um, I feel like. Sancho is going to prove him wrong because we already know he's having a very good season right now. Even though he, he's not really as he's fit. A, he's as, having a decent uh, season. Yeah, not a very good one. Yeah, he's not he's as fit. He's calling the goal, yeah. but he's not as yeah. fit as like the coach yeah. want him to be. So give yeah. him time and let's see the next few games. You know, and he's capable of a lot more. Yeah. Rashford, Rashford, if he's fit, I think he's going to be called because he's one of those ones that the, 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 the English coach likes a lot. So we'll see. You see, Ivan Tony, by the way, he's in the England squad. So he's he's called, yeah. I'm happy for yeah. him too because he's a very good striker. Because striking department in England, Harry Kane is the only one that stands out. The rest, I don't really know of any striker that has been consistent like that for England, to be honest. Yeah. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah we didn't talk about Man City anything. Uh, yeah, but it's okay. It was just a 1 1 game. Uh, one, Bailey, one, your yeah, boy, Bailey. Did you start him in that game? I'm sure you didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't start him. I, didn't, I, saw, I saw his eight points on my bench and I was like, ah, oh, man. <laughs> Haaland with the nine points. I'm so, I'm, uh, yeah, I have Haaland. I didn't captain him, of course. But yeah. I, yeah, I didn't expect a lot of goals in that game. So 1 1, and Haaland got the nine pointer, not captaining him. I, I feel a little bit disappointed. I wasn't expecting him to be the guy. I don't know. I have Haaland in my team, but I'm not always wanting him to score goals. I don't know. Is, is that a Liverpool fan that, talking? Or is that a no, no, a, no, no, no. NFL fan with me? I think the reason is because everybody has him, so you're not really keen <laughs> on having him in your team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but, okay, I think we can we can move on to the Koto Classic Mini League now. Um. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, it's just game week. We had game week five and game week six. Game week five, there was a tie in the in the manager of the week. Uh, but we just covered yeah. game week six, which was bang the bang bang the ball. Lamin Baji, he got eighty four points in a game week where everybody was getting forty points or less. Yeah, this is to have eighty four points, that is massive, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had Pickford in goal. Pickford also did very well against Liverpool. He was saving everything yeah. <laughs> with nine points. I heard he had uh, a good game, yeah. Yeah, and in defense, he had uh. Saliba, who got uh, zero point, Walker two points, point. and Fabian Shea with six point. In the middle, it's a different are, team, huh? Yeah, yeah, different <laughs> team, different team, definitely. No, different no, team. No trend, no Cancelo, no Rhys James. So you see, no, so, nothing. And then you have in the middle Salah, uh, Luis Diaz, and uh, Rashford. Rashford is a big difference with his eighteen points, and uh, Bernardo okay. Bernardo there Silva. In the, and in attack, we have Mitrovic, who gave him five points. Tony, 17 points. Haaland, nine Tony, points. yeah. Tony was a big one. Yeah. Tony and Rashford yeah. were the yeah. big ones. Yeah, yeah. I, definitely. Big week. Okay, I think the strike, the striking department was the big one for him. So, congrats, congrats Lamin, Lamin Baji. Yeah. And being the manager of the week for Game Week 6. Game Week 6. And uh, the Kodo Classic mm-hmm. uh, table. Kodo Classic Mini League table. Not much changes. Yeah, it's unchanged. I think there's just one new entry. Uh, Chisco FC, Chibuzo Oka, uh, moving into fifth. Uh-huh. Um, in fourth, we still have Old Roja. Uh, in third, we have Stranger Inks. In second, Underrated Carrasco. Uh, and then still at first is uh, Awareness FC, Mohamed Dampa. Yeah, 41 points. Of, are, yeah, think, he's flying, right? <laughs> he's flying, yeah. I mean, things are, things are, things are looking <laughs> really tough at the top, so... Uh, that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So looking at uh, 
what is it? Uh, we'll talk about a few stats. I think the stats are back in 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 uh in action. <laughs> in, in, in person, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because yeah, we have played like one quarter of the season so far, so mm. it's gonna come sparingly. It's not gonna come like Eventually, every week yeah. like we used to do it. Like yeah, like okay, when we have a, like a a set of data, then we can look at it and see the players who are doing well. Of course, six games only played is still a very Little like to squad. build to build the stats, yeah, it's the stat yeah, yeah, data, yeah. The, the database. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I but I think it's enough to see the trends. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, we can start with the team data, and uh, then we can look at the player data, because the team data, okay. the, the the importance of team data is, you know, the teams that are creating the chances, you know, the teams that are defending well, you know, the teams to target when you wanna have the clean sheets, and you know, the teams to target when you wanna have the goals. That's why it's important to look at the teams generally as it as a whole. Then you look at the individual players that you want to target. So looking at teams, um, in this table here, we have uh, attacking data and defensive data. The attacking data is the ones in blue and the defensive data is the ones in red on the right. Um, in the attacking data, let's start looking at the attacking data. You have it sorted by ex- uh, expected goals. Expected goals, <coughs> I think everyone is quite familiar with it now. And BC here stands for big chances and uh, G stands for goal. And delta xg means the difference in goals and, and expected goals. So, looking at the teams, um, I think it's very quite clear that Manchester City is completely on a level of their own. Um, mm. Usually, in the last few seasons, you will see Liverpool there close to them. But this season, it's like Manchester City and then the rest. That is how you will analyze the data. Manchester City, they are averaging 2.6 xg. And um, followed by them, you have Liverpool with 2.2 xg. You have Arsenal 2.1 xG, Brentford and Brighton, they have 2.0 xG, they are at fourth. When you look at Manchester City, the big chances they are having per game, they have in, they're averaging 4.7 big chances per game. <laughs> like, if, if, if a team is averaging this, it's like they have to win every game 4-0 at least. And that is what yeah. they are playing. Like, they are scoring 3.3 goals per game. And they are quite, like, underperforming. In, in the, in, 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 no, they are quite uh, overperforming in terms of xG and, 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 their, and their goals. S- but still, that is what you want to see from a team that is creating enough chances. If you add the overperformance, that is kind of a icing on the cake, I would say. Um, Liverpool are not doing badly in terms of attack, contrary, to what, to, contrary there, yeah. to what people think. They are not doing mm-hmm. badly at all. Um, they are they have scored two point five goals per game. But don't forget that um, there was the trashing of Brentford of Bournemouth. Nine, oh, that might have so that kind of skewed, uh, skewed the, the yeah, skewed yeah, the data. Mm-hmm. But if you take that data, that one out, it will be much, much lower. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. But still, they are there in terms of attack. And if they get their act together, you will expect them to, you know, you will expect the usual suspects to do something. That is, that is, that is my take from that one. And then you have Arsenal. They have been quite impressive this season. Brentford, of course. Ivan Tony, he's at the center of everything. Brighton. Unfortunately, they lost the coach now, but they have been doing exceptionally well. Tottenham, they are sixth in terms of attack. And if you look at the defensive data, where we want to target, of course, the clean sheets and stuff like that, Manchester City are also on a league of their own. <laughs> so the things are not looking good for the league. It's not just because <laughs> Manchester, it's Manchester City and the rest, and that is not good for the Premier League. It's like they are walking away with everything. But thank God, it's quite close to still. They are not at the top of the table. That's not no, that's true. The table. <laughs> yeah. As well at the top of the table, but yeah, Manchester City in terms of XGC expected goals considered 0.7 per game. Tottenham second with 0.8, Arsenal third with 0.9, Brighton fourth with 1.0. So Brighton, you can see them represented in the attacking data and in the defensive data. So it will be a massive loss for them. Arsenal likewise, they are third in the defense attacking and third in the defensive data. And then the defensive data to somewhere I am kind of interested is the bottom of the bottom half of the table where you have the whipping boys, the teams that you will whipping target boys, yeah. because they are not good defensively. And if you look at the like from like you have the bottom, you have Nottingham Forest, they are considering 2.2 xg per game. You have Fulham uh, in second to last with 2.0 xg per game, and then you have Crystal Palace, Leicester, and Bournemouth, they are all considering 1.9 uh, xg per game. Crystal Palace is a quite surprising one for me because they were used to be yes, a very good yeah. defensive team. Mm-hmm. But you look at you look at their big chances considered. Three point three big chances per game they are considered. But again, the they have played. They, yeah, they played Liverpool. They played Manchester City. So sometimes these two teams can you know, especially Manchester mm-hmm. City game when they went two zero up, Manchester City completely you know 
came out with some too much attacking with them, gave them everything they had in attack. But what do you think of the attack and defensive data in terms of teams? What's any surprises or any, you know? I think it gives, it, yeah, it, it gives you an idea. I'm, my surprise is Liverpool because as poorly as they've been doing, I, I still see them as second, you know, kind of like, okay, that means I might have been overreacting with <laughs> how badly you guys were doing, but um, apparently not. You know? So, but like you explained, it might be like that nine zero might have skewed the the, the data in a, in a bit. Maybe as things progress, we'll see them like drop down to where we think they should be this season. You know, um, another surprise, like you said, is Crystal Palace. And they were they are a good team, but I think if you look at who they have played so far, like they have done well. Yeah, they played to most of the big boys. You know, yeah, Arsenal, and, Man United, uh, Arsenal, yeah, Liverpool, and, uh, and, and, Liverpool, and Man City, and Man City, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they've played almost like uh, half of the top six uh, so far. So I think things will definitely improve for them. They will pr probably go high up the, the defensive stats soon. Um, yeah, I think those are the only... Um, I was thinking Tottenham will also be the top defen defensive um, team this, this season. They are second. They, they are second to Man City. They are ex exceptional. <laughs> with the, yeah, because they, 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 they hardly concede this. They have hardly conceded the lot of goals this season. So 0 0.7 big chances better. per game. That is... Less than that's, anything. That's that is maybe crazy, one. Right? Man City is considered yeah. one point two big chances per game. So yeah, considering zero point. Yeah, I mean that's that's interesting. That might come in handy if you want to start targeting. The problem with them is who do you get because they have so many players, so many. Uh, yeah. Like the backup, the the backup team is so good that you don't know who to get because yeah. one one week they play in the next week they might be benched because they have somebody who's who can you know fill in. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I mean, actually, I you know I which we will discuss later. I am on a free hit or something like that. That is the biggest problem you just mentioned. Who mm -hmm. to get? Like in the Champions League, Neil, they, lost, Neil, yeah. they lost. They lost two. They lost two zero. Um, even though they considered in the last 90, 90th minute two goals, like uh, Paris started on the left and Emerson Royal started. Emerson started every game so far this season. Like Cesar, when he plays, he is very good. So you have the Hotty there. You have Spence there. So you don't know who to get. And actually, mm -hmm. to target their defense, you want the fullbacks. You don't want the center backs. Of course, you can go for the center backs. And you can be quite certain who starts because it's Dyer, uh, Romero, and somebody else on Romero, the left. Yeah. But you yeah. don't want those players, right? Because they don't you give you any attacking threat. You want those, attack, those attacking <laughs> fullbacks, but you don't yeah, know who's going to yeah. start. It's quite tricky, mm -hmm. right? But yeah, but when we go to my free hit, maybe you will advise me on the one I should, I should be thinking about. Because yeah, it's very it's, it's quite hard. It's quite hard. Okay, um, so moving on to the players, player stats. Yeah, player stats too. Um, we have one Mr. Haaland at the top on his own, <laughs> him too. <laughs> uh, this data is, of course, uh, sorted by expected points per 90 minutes. Uh, like the average, what they are averaging per 90 in terms of expected points. And uh, Haaland have 10.4 <clears throat> expected points. The closest to him is Firmino with 7.6. Of course, that's that 9 0. Don't forget what Firmino did. That was where he got oh, well, most of yeah. his expected data coming from. But Haaland is just in a league of his own. So <laughs> for me, here, I'm thinking about maybe this guy, I should, I should not get him for this game week or stuff like that. It's just a crazy idea. But I, what, what we will see. We will see. Yeah, he's at the top in terms of that. And then you have Rodrigo, who is now currently injured. Mitrovic at fourth. So he's another significant player so far this season. He has scored six goals in six games. Harry Kane is not doing badly himself either with mm -hmm. 9.2. Yeah. yeah, with 7.2. And then you have KDB, who, of course, most of it will come from the, his expected assists and stuff like that. Martinelli, um... At least I'm not having a great season, but if I see Martinelli in this in this high states, I'm quite happy because, like, there was this stage in the, before the season started. Like, I made a like a statement when I when I went to one space or something like that. I said, despite the price of Martinelli, I like this boy more than Saka because he's more he has more of a striker's instinct than Saka. But they mm -hmm. like they kind of ridicule me very badly in <laughs> in saying that because they say I just say this because he's cheaper than Saka. But it was something mm -hmm. I really meant. He is, he is more of a striker than Saka, right? Saka is the better player. Saka, Saka is, is the more one who gets on player. the ball. Yeah, more yeah. of a creative assistant. But, assistant. but in terms of FPL, and it's about mm -hmm. the points, right? This guy will give you the points more than Saka. So, and he has proven that. I'm quite happy. I hope those people who who, who <laughs> ridicule me on, on that forum can listen. But I'm happy to see him. I hope, to I hope him. they're listening to you, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if you but, watch Arsenal, you can, you can tell that Martinelli is like always looking for some, like, he's always attacking and 
like right. on the front he's seat, running behind, behind, you know. Yeah, he's a hardworking player. As much as he's skillful and you know, it's nice to watch him play. The thing is, he's an attacking player, like, and he's always a hardworking player. That's what you need to realize about he. He presses from the from the front, just like my uh, Gabriel Jesus. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think I want to highlight one thing here. Uh, it's Salah. <laughs> Look at him where he is. He's 15. Hustling for position with players like Jesse, Jesse March, who is a left back. <laughs> so well, that kind of, you know, <laughs> that kind of stood out for me. Salah is the most expensive player in the game. And he is hustling for a spot with Jesse March. I don't know. It, which, it's March, not Jesse March. What, what's the name again? Soli March. Soli March. Yeah, Soli March. He's like, like they, they are about the same, the same numbers, right? Is that, is, know, that not, you know, is that not worrying? It's worrying, but you know, I'm I'm a bit happy. You know why? Uh, I have a thing against expensive players. And <laughs> for if, that's why I wanted to continue this way. So next season, his players will go way down. <laughs> yeah, can, I think it might. Have, you know, we can have more funds to spend around, man. Because like because if he if he continued the way he was continuing for the past few seasons, you never know. He was gonna probably hit 15 million for one player. You know, like ridiculous, man. So it's, I'm happy. Yeah. It's crazy, right? Sorry, Salah, but you know this is the way the the, 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 the game works. But yeah. yeah. Okay, but, so um, anything else you wanna discuss with uh the player data? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but um, maybe if you have anything to say about the data, players like Son, uh, Stalin, they are there. I think I think Son Son was was uh is like uh, anyway, it's like a bad luck uh, because all these past few years his price was like he was under underpriced uh-huh. and. The first season he was priced correctly, and then he's having a <laughs> And you know what is world. funny? What is funny? We all uh, keep saying this, or I keep saying this many times. His finishing is exceptional. He don't need big chances. He don't need mm-hmm. a lot of chances. He will convert them. But this season he's underperforming, which is very like unlike Son. He's always overperforming, right? Because of his finishing ability. So he's getting the numbers he used to get, which is not significantly high. But he's not overperforming on top of that, no, on to, on, over those numbers, which is the biggest worry this season for me. I was thinking it was his fitness, but the season keep going. And I'm sure confidence will, will kick in. And now he will do things that he will not do naturally, like try to take shots from anywhere and try mm. to, take, trying to be more selfish than he used to be. All those kind of things will kick in. But it is quite wor- worrying for him now, eight games in. And Son has not had any goal in the season. What, what's your take on we'll, him? We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. I haven't watched him play. I don't know what's changed. The only thing I saw was a highlight from, I think, one of the first two games or so. And I was expecting him to score because usually he doesn't miss those kind of chances and he missed this. I was surprised. Yeah. Well, I still feel it's a confidence issue. And um, it's going to tell what kind of player he is because the team is now a very good team. They have really good backup players and those players should even be starting. Yeah. So players like Riz Charleston and the Kulusevskis, you know, yeah. those players are like really good players and they are doing well. And it's going to put the, the, the pressure on his back now to really like um, justify him having the starting place. Staying you know, and I think right? he's going to react positively. Yeah, honestly. So let's see how it goes. Maybe um, less, maybe Leicester this weekend is the week for him, uh, don't you think? Yeah, we'll see. Could be. Could maybe be. he needs maybe he needs a break too. You know, maybe international break will do good for him when he comes back. You know, goes to his country and plays a few games and gets some goals, yeah. boosts his confidence, and then transfer that that energy back to the 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 the, the, the team. Yeah, but, so but yeah, see. yeah. But before we move, any names, any other names that 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 that, that interest you here, like Zaha or something like that, Crystal Palace, they are having a fixture tone. So I think yeah, Zaha is somebody that I think we should keep an eye on. You know, um, like I said, yeah, you think you're right. That the the ton of um, fixtures will definitely be, and he's on penalties, right. even though he misses penalties. But yeah, he is a... <laughs> he's the main guy. He's the main, he's the main guy to be honest. We have from and Go- how about Gordon uh, Everton? He's also not doing badly. He's in the mix with Gordon, Salah. Last time I watched him, he was playing a false nine. Yeah, for his price, I, th- I think five point five million 5.5, now. Yeah. Maybe it's gone up a bit. He's really good. He's really good. But the thing is about Everton, they don't really score when he goes. You, even if you have Gordon, the midfielders are doing so much better now in this. That I don't think he's he'll be somebody that I start as yeah. much as I like it. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. De- 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 definitely. Um, definitely. So moving on to uh, 
our fan corner. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, a new a new segment that we've introduced uh, to the pot this season. So our fan corner. First things first is <laughs> Tuchel out, um, Potter in for Chelsea. <laughs> yeah. What what do you think about Tuchel? Why do you think he was let go? Hmm. <laughs> that is cool. that is a difficult one. I was surprised to be honest. I was su- yeah. Even though leading up to the sacking, like two games in, like that was when they played West Ham. I wrote on the code WhatsApp group. When is Potter gonna? When when is Tuchel gonna get sacked? They played the Champions League. I wrote the same thing, and then the next day he was sacked. <laughs> even though I, I was doing that for banter's sake, it was not something I expected at all. You know, it was just like I just wanted to troll the Chelsea fans. And then it happened. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised. About, I'm yeah, surprised. The thing about yeah, mm, the thing about Chelsea is that's why I've always liked them. Is they don't play that game. Yeah. Like as soon as they start seeing a trend, you know, they quickly nip it in the board. They don't let it go for like six, seven games because I think they always focus on, you know, um, staying in the Champions League. You know, because that's the way of revenue for them and yeah. the way they develop this team. The team is very self-sustaining. You know, they had this uh, the loan system that worked for them. And the team is, I always say that the team is always so good that anybody that is a really decent coach can manage it properly because they have the good players. They yeah. always buy well. You understand? I was surprised that he was let go, but I read somewhere that, I think a small article that they said that the owner, the Ted Bowley guy said, when he met with Twitter, it doesn't seem like they shared the same vision for the team. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that. eventually he was going to let, he was going to be let go even from the beginning. But yeah. we, we it was just, maybe this is an excuse <laughs> since he was having a terrible time. You know, they didn't give him the chance. They it. didn't give him a chance at all. But they already knew that he was going to leave. <laughs> so yeah. you see the problem. Yeah, yeah but, I, um, but I, I, I think Tuchel is one of the top managers out there. He's a good player. He's a along, good, uh, along, yeah, good manager. Along with Pep, Definitely. along with Klopp. Yeah. Um, yeah. He is in that bracket, you know, along with Conte, mm-hmm. of course. He is in that bracket of very good managers. And... He haven't done badly at Chelsea. He took them to two finals last season. He took them to the Champions League. He won the Champions League. He won the Club World Cup for them. He did not do badly at all. Like I think it's, it was just a matter of, like you say, not being, not having the same vision. But it was not a matter of he's not a good coach. He's not a definitely for them, for them, for, for them uh, yeah. to say. But it was surprising to me. And now they have gone a completely different route, very unlike Chelsea. Yeah, they 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 did Lampard. But Lampard, it was under circumstances because they had the mm-hmm. ban, the, you know, they had, they, they needed somebody who players, was banned. Yeah. Like, it was hard situations that they, they had to come bring in Lampard. But with Potter, they are going with a manager, with a project manager. They are not going with a, who will come and give them the trophies, which they usually want, right? Chelsea, they want to mm-hmm. win. Success. They yeah. are, they are, they are addicted to winning. Their fans are addicted to winning. The, the culture, like, since Abramovich came into this team, he has instilled something in, into them. And Potter is not this manager for me. That is the biggest worry. <laughs> but I like him as a manager. Like he's a very, he's good, a very manager. good manager. Yeah, and if you see good. their game, like over the last, like I, I, I was very keen to to see the tactics that he that he applied in that game and stuff like that. I was very impressed the way they played, even though they drew one one in the game. But he was very impressive. But my worry is, are they going to give him the time at Chelsea? The time, yeah, Chelsea don't they don't they don't give you the time to be honest. Yeah. Um. Also, moving on to the next. <laughs> The Chelsea owner, this just got me riled up a bit, but anyways, uh, he's trying to recreate the, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the like NBA, NBA All Star uh, uh, um, uh, thinking in the Premier League about this All Star All Star uh, thingy in <laughs> North versus West or South or whatever. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, let's look at his statement first of all. Uh, he say like, you could do a North versus South. All star game for the Premier League and fund whatever the pyramid needed, like very easily. Like fund whatever the, the pyramid that is the football pyramid in England. Um, for me personally, I don't care too much <laughs> because <laughs> the money is not coming to me. But but he is making it look <clears throat> genuine by you know by like d- redirecting the funds to who needs it. That is the the the, the lower the, teams and the, the, the lower teams in the in the in, in, the, in the English football pyramid exactly. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, <laughs> it was absurd. Like it was a crazy, crazy thing to say. But the more you think about it, the more you see the fun part of it, right? The more you think about it, I, I think I think it's it's it might be a good idea. But the problem, my problem is, uh-huh. like, the league or English football is so competitive that we don't where would we find the time 
I'm sure that managers wouldn't really want to play their best players in the middle yeah. of the season when they are going for cups. They are trying to manage the minutes of their players and they want to decide to play uh, a charity match. No, it's not going to work like that. Anything you want to do, if you can do it pre-season, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Or when the season ends. But when the pre-season ends, nobody, everybody has played so many games that they don't even want to play any football anymore. You yeah. understand? So pre-season game, I think, will be perfect for all these all-star things. The ones that are available, they have it played somewhere else, like in the in another continent or whatever. But in the middle of the season, I think it's just a ridiculous idea. Yeah, of course, of course. I I think uh, for him, he just made the suggestion out there. So he did not necessarily pick a a particular period where they should play it or something like that. So so at least, yeah. So he just put the idea there out. So it depends on how they arrange it. But yeah, I I have suggestions that the community shield can be like it's, it's just a friendly game itself so why not you tarnish that one and then make it a all-star or something like that <laughs> they, but no yeah it, of course it, the funds will be there it will bring a lot of funds for for the premier league i don't know how much um i'm not into the finances of stuff like that it would bring that and um it but at the end of the day the premier league what my biggest worry for me is the competitive nature like yeah you are going to ask like for example the way he suggested is not versus south who is in it not arsenal Tottenham. You're gonna bring the Tottenham and the Arsenal, and then you the expect players. the Arsenal fans. Yeah, you expect, expect the Arsenal fans to support the Tottenham player. You know, you go to go to the South. You have Manchester United. You have Manchester City. You have Liverpool. These three teams don't like each other. You wanna bring their players together. You know, it's, it just does not work that way in America. You know, like you can. Yeah. Like, even though they are rivals, they they still. Of course, it happens in football. Like they 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 they. they they are they are friends too, right? But in the Premier League, it's not it's not necessarily like this, right? They are real rivals. It's quite different. It's way of life, yeah. The, the, the rivalry is a way of life. Yeah. yeah. It's, but it's but the idea is not bad. It, I'm sure many people will enjoy it. And like even if they play, I will watch it. You will watch it. You know, we oh, will, well, well, we will, yeah. because we will, yeah. So that is how entertaining it will be. So it's not a bad idea, but I'm not sure it works in the Premier League. That's the only thing for me. We can give it a try. Like if they try it in, for example, the, the youth league and see how it works. Maybe you never know. Because to be honest, I'm curious to see how like we've never played together. Like how two rivals can come together in a team. You know, uh, it's gonna be very strange. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, uh, Rio Ferdinand. Rio Ferdinand. Actually, I was watching the CBS, like the Champions League. Actually, you know, he made his he made this kind of uh, suggestion in 2011. It's in his tweet. Oh, really? Yeah, he said there should be a, 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 a an all star game. So he was very, you know, he was very geared up to hear somebody yeah. be coming with the same idea. So he cannot rule out the idea. He just happy that somebody is bringing this idea, even though okay. who 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 was he with on 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 TV? I cannot remember who he was on presenting with. It was oh, it was uh Jamie Redknapp or McManaman. It was one of these former players. They tried to you know. Like brush it aside, but yeah, just, um, no, it's not it, back up again. Right? Some stuff like that. You can check that on YouTube, anyways. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. So, uh, moving on to the game week now, game week nine uh, preview. Um, there are some few announcements. I think we'll talk about this. The best thing to do is just to, uh, like you just put right there the ticker. Yeah. Um, the long view. This section is we'll talk about the planning since now uh, things are getting intense. So we talk about long view from game week nine to game week sixteen. Yeah, very. Um, Chama, we see some holes. In, you see some holes <laughs> in the ticker. <laughs> yeah, the hole started. The hole started last week, actually. Game week seven, of course. That one was yeah. everybody got the hole because unfortunately, <laughs> like the, in, 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 the English people lost their queen, which is very sad for them. So yeah, our condolence to anyone who is you know, um, mm-hmm. grieving that one. Uh, but this game week also is 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 related to that one. Except, of course, for Crystal Palace and Brighton. That one was cancelled prior to, to the, mm. the postponement. But now we have Manchester United versus Leeds cancelled, uh, postponed. And Liverpool versus uh, Chelsea postponed. So it means these teams have two weeks without a, without a Premier League fixture, which is quite, you know, which is quite uh, not great for us, uh, Manu and Liverpool fans, I would say. But for me, I'm 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 quite happy with it, <laughs> to be honest. But yeah, it's just because uh they don't have enough security to you know to support these games, so it means those games cannot cannot take place. So, but yet we still have seven fixtures to take place. So these fixtures will be played post World Cup, I presume. 
because there is no space now against game week 16 yeah. to yeah. fix the picture. It's going to get picture. very, very, like, very, um, very, very, very fast. Yeah. And, and you can even see another hole in the middle of game week 12 where you have Arsenal and Manchester City. They are not playing their fixture. Um, that is because Arsenal also had their European game, which was the Europa League yesterday, This which was supposed to have held yesterday, also postponed. Now that fixture will go in there and that fixture now instead will be postponed for until after the World Cup. So that is what we have now. But now uh, people like you have read that crunch period where you have thinking about the wildcard. Me, I have already <laughs> hit mine in game week two, wasted mine in game week two. So, yeah, and there are some fixture, fi some good fixture turns, like West Ham, they're going to have some very nice fixtures. Leicester City, themselves, they're having a very good run of fixtures coming up. And these smaller teams, like Bright, like the upcoming, like the teams coming from mm -hmm. the championship, that is Nottingham Forest and, 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 and Bournemouth, they also have nice fixture run. Newcastle, Everton, they all have good fixture run. And the actual teams that we usually want our players to come from, that are the Liverpools, the Arsenals, the Chelsea's, and the Manchester Cities, Manchester United, they are all in quite a At the bottom. difficult period. So it's quite tricky to mm -hmm. to plan really without right and trying to ignore these players. Actually, it does not happen. People will still pick their, those those players. Um, yeah, it's quite, it's, it's quite tricky, but um, especially for wildcarders right now, I would have been happy to be in this position like you guys have the wildcard in my hand, but I see it's very difficult to play the wildcard. I even struggle to, you know, advice though like talk to people who are playing the wild card and to say me i cannot give any like solid answer that this is yeah. the time or that is the time to be honest it's a strange one it's a strange one for me i think um the way to go is have those key players from the big teams like your hollands uh your who else is there again that's ha it's only Haaland this season right it's only Haaland right now you <laughs> because you, you cannot say salah you cannot say son Haaland a... and kdb maybe and even kdb you have to be yeah. very skeptical, right? You no, know, that's that's what I'm saying. Like it's it's a strange season because yeah. all are go-to players. You know that like, if you have a go-to player, it's a player that you you set and forget, like the Salah and Son and the Canes, you know, and the TAs. It gives you less to think about. Yeah. But now they're not performing. That means you need to really start playing the game now and get players that perform. I feel like um teams that have been struggling, um like uh, the Leicesters um. The West Ham's. I think West Ham did well last season, so maybe they might kick off their season with the good fixtures. It's time yeah. to start looking at the Bowens and the, and the Antonios. For Leicester, I don't see anybody. Maybe Madison, you know. Um, Bournemouth, I'm not going to get any player from there, to be honest. I don't really see. So like that. Is doing well, do well. But, I mean, I have, I have, there's Mitrovic who has a really good uh, <laughs> run. Even, uh, even uh, yeah, yeah, that's Brentford. Right. Is Brentford there? Yeah, Brentford. Yeah, Brentford is, is, is not bad, actually, you yeah. know. So, so I don't, I don't think I'll go for someone unless he bangs like two hat tricks in a row. Or like that. <laughs> then that one you gotta resist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Crystal Palace also like I think I sh we should start taking a look at them. But um, other than that, man, it's gonna be a tough, tough, yeah. tough play to, to tough see to what the work is right? gonna be like. Yeah, it's gonna be and tough. you have the pressure to use it before game week sixteen at the end mm -hmm. of the day, mm -hmm. which is like so, the, yeah. the later you use it, the the more you feel. It is not benefit. It is not too no, beneficial. Not beneficial because yeah, why would because you need it, like two or three games like before that? Uh, you know, like why can't before game week sixteen or something? Yeah. Like. But yeah, that's that is that is the worry now. But um, it's good to to identify what what is ahead of us right now so that we can deal with it when we get there. You know. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, let's look at the fixtures. Uh, the mark is up to week for game week nine. Just seven <clears> fixtures, <throat> right? Mm, the seven fixtures. Um, so which one pops out to you? Uh, I think it's going to be a difficult one. Just yeah. looking at these, I think it's not going to be as easy as. And very strange, right? Very. We have it's seven strange, fixtures. Yes. Two of them will be tonight, Friday night. <laughs> mm -hmm. Two of the fixtures are Friday, and uh, you have like Aston Villa, Southampton, Nottingham Forest, Fulham. That's tonight, and then you have Man City tomorrow. They play the early kick off with Ma uh, Wolves away. Wolves. Then there is only one. Uh, Afternoon kickoff that is Bournemouth versus Newcastle, Newcastle versus Bournemouth at Newcastle, of course. Then you have Sports, Leicester, Brentford, Arsenal, Everton, and West Ham. Of course, um, for me, the main one is Tottenham. I mm -hmm. know people still because of Haaland, because of the way Manchester City are playing, they are still feeling that it's Manchester City is the. I see this Wolves fixture as a very horrible fixture, like 
t- they are very difficult to play against. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, organization I say, wise. Yeah, yeah they yeah. are very organized. I would say Man City will win the game, but I'm not seeing a lot of goals. It's similar to the Aston Villa game where they drew one one. Aston Villa, I think Wolves are a better defensive team than Aston Villa. Even though Manchester City will dominate the play, Manchester City will, you know, will be the dominant team in that game. But I can see Wolves, you know, making it very tight for them, and I cannot see a lot of goals in that one. So that helps why I, with Leicester, the way they are defending, the defenders they have, you know. The goalkeeper they have, what is terrible? He's a he's a goalkeeper. He's a, he's a goalkeeper. He doesn't inspire confidence at all. <laughs> Not yeah. at all. Did you see the high, did you see the video on you on Twitter on what performance in the last game against uh? I, saw, I watched the game. I actually watched the game. Like you, you watched the game. <laughs> then you know more than me because Nidhi, was, Nidhi was really Nidhi, Nidhi was really was bad at him at some point. He yeah. like he, they were insulting he, each other, yeah. Yeah, he cannot even pass the ball properly. He is a terrible goalkeeper. I'm I'm not even I'm not even sure he will start this game. If I was the coach, mm-hmm. I I would not be I would not be so comfortable starting him in this game. So if he's starting this game, yeah. it's it's a, I don't think he's a terrible keeper. The problem is he Confidence. has been a good keeper, but he hasn't played. The thing about a keep a goalkeeper is you need games. Yeah. You know, if you don't have games, then you don't know you can be doing well in training. Training is not the same as game as having an actual game. You know, yeah. and he the problem is he's a good shot stopper, but the distribution, you know, what he wants to do in his mind and what how he thought yeah. how he executes it. And he don't get the presence, right? So, don't get the presence of Simai. Yeah, the presence, Simai, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, definitely. It's quite a I think it's gonna be I, I think if it if they have been playing the way they play the past few games, and this is a this is a big game for them, like they are gonna get, get mauled, to be honest. But they're gonna get hammered, course. right? They're gonna yeah, get hammered. And that's yeah. what, this is what I want. So that's why. I'm really back in this Tottenham fixture. I I'm going. I'm gonna go full in. I'm gonna go full in in that into that fixture. But yeah, I did back them in the first game, and they did disappoint me. If you remember, Son and Kane, they kind of started my terrible season <laughs> because of they didn't do well in that in that particular first game week. But yeah, I think I will go back there again. You know, I like I like pain, so I'm going back. <laughs> I enjoy pain. <laughs> what what are you thinking about? What, what fixture are you thinking of? It's, t- it's tough. I don't think there's any fixture that stands out, to be honest. Um, I just think the Brentford Arsenal one would be interesting because uh, last season, the first game of the season, Brentford beat Arsenal 2 0. Yeah. And then Arsenal has been a different team since then. So I feel like it would be tough. But maybe Gabriel Jesus might be an option. You, you never know. You know so yeah, and Brentford have been doing well. So I, I actually I got I get, I got rid of him. So which means there is another goal mm. and four assists coming. <laughs> like he didn't give, <laughs> like he didn't give it. To... But yeah, um, Newcastle and uh and Bournemouth. Bournemouth, yeah, that's another yeah. One. I I know it's Bournemouth. Um, they have been terrible at the start of the season. But in the last two games, since they sacked Parker, they still they had that uh new manager bounce. They drew zero zero in their they first game after too, yeah. After they lost nine zero to Liverpool, they drew zero zero, and then they played against Nottingham Forest last week. Away to Nottingham Forest, they won that game. Coming from behind, two zero down, they win the game three two. Me too. Solanke, mm-hmm. Solanke so defensively, they are still one of the best. They are the worst when we look at when we looked at the data earlier. They were one of the one of the worst defensive teams in the league. So it could be tricky for them. And um, Newcastle too, they are a very nice team. Like they and Isaac, yeah, he's been doing well. So it could be it it could be another fixture. I think that is kind of player that who will win the goals yeah yeah and i will expect you to win that one right mm-hmm. um so moving it along uh our captain symmetric sticker cmt <laughs> let's see what it has this week because uh the things are moving like, moving, moving like mad the, 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 the past few weeks okay so um in f- at first choice we have cristiano or bruno versus of course uh, they're Leeds. not playing against Leeds. yeah so they that is is is, is, clo- is out close. Yeah, let's see the next one, Tottenham versus Leicester. So yeah, I think you're right. The ticker yeah. did <laughs> predict this one. But I think this automatically goes as the, the, the main one to, to choose right, right now. Is um, I look at it, Newcastle, Bournemouth, yeah. Isaac, I think, yeah. That also works. Watkins, Aston Villa, Southampton. And then in fifth choice, we have uh, Nottingham Forest versus Fulham, so Lingard. And then sixth, we have Brentford, Arsenal. I think this one should have been uh, like maybe higher up. But um, yeah, we'll see. I think all these are good uh, because of because of because of away fixture. You know, the, the way I work mm-hmm. with it, <laughs> like the way I do the guy is like I give a lot of emphasis on on home yeah. fixture, and um, mm-hmm. I give more emphasis. Like it's about the good defense versus the bad defense, and then 
it comes to this. That's why you cannot even see Manchester City because Wolves are a very good defensive team. <laughs> so and they are going away to Wolves. So it's quite difficult for, for in that in that regard. But of course, I know many many yeah. with Captain Haaland because of the form he is on. But yeah, I'm not gonna be one of those. I think it's gonna be a, a very tricky one. This week uh-huh. is gonna be a tricky one. Yeah. Okay, um finally, I think we'll go to our team selection. I think let's start with you since you are on a, a free hit. So I yeah. think let's let's go, go to your 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 latest draft. Free hit, yeah. Yeah, I, I I think there will be uh one change, just one change I expect. But yeah, in goal I go with uh Pope. I think he's the standard one. Uh, yeah, the I think Wildcard is also going with him. And in defense, yeah. I bring my boy Cancelo, even though I've not backed him this season very well. I saw You're something. Back. Yeah, <laughs> I, I want to clean it. And um, he's quite he's looking like the only nailed Manchester City player who keeps playing. Even Diaz is keeps coming inside the team and going out. Now that Laporte mm-hmm. is, is coming back, there is more more rotation in defense. Now I'm not gonna go into their centre back. So I went with Cancelo, who I think will start almost every game for for them. And Sessignon, uh we are talking about who to who to go with in Tottenham's defense. I went with Sessignon because he did not start the last two games, so I would think he will mm-hmm. start this one. That is the only logic I I go with. Trippier, I think he has been quite impressive, taking all the set pieces and corner kicks and stuff like that for 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 Newcastle, and they have a very nice fixture against Bournemouth. So I think that was a no brainer, like they say. Um, in the middle, I went with your boy Bailey. Uh, he plays Southampton at home. I think he has quite a good for me. And um, <laughs> yeah, I want to, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm backing him a bit there. I went with I think he's picking up, picking up a bit of form too. So uh, the past two games, he's been doing okay, and I think he's been starting now. So hopefully, he develops from there, and Jada doesn't get fired. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and another one, Klusevski is also a very tricky one. He did not start, yeah. that's why I think he will start. This is kind of I'm mm-hmm. gambling with this with these post players. That is the biggest, that is the most difficult part of it. And uh Martinelli. Martinelli might I might change Martinelli just for this game because I'm gonna keep him eventually. So I might t- I'm tempted to just have a little ch- because it's a free hit. You wanna experiment. Uh De Bruyne. Uh, I have De Bruyne, and then up top I have K- Haaland, Kane, and Mitrovic. Kane get my, 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 my captain. So the change that I, I I would do is maybe Martinelli to Saka. Even though I think Martinelli is the better one, but I just, just want to I just want to change, different. right? Yeah, something different, <clears throat> something like that. Yeah. I think you should try and go with Odegaard. Odegaard is something, somebody that, that nobody is looking at, but he's been doing very well this season too. So mm-hmm. he's an option, I think. Yeah, he's an option. Um, yeah, I think your team looks really solid. Kane is somebody I would like to have this week, but I can't really have him, obviously. Mitrovic is there. You know, um, Haaland. The top three, I think, is fine. You don't need to change. But you could go Isaac up front in, 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 instead of Mitrovic, you know? Mm-hmm. That is possible. It's a, I mean, it's a very good... Because one more, really, they just ship out goals <laughs> all the time. You know so, you know what? Uh, I did not consider that because I really wanted Isaac and I was thinking Haaland will leave because I'm not expecting a lot of goals from the Tottenham game. From the yeah, you can do that also. You can do that also. But, um, but, but if, yeah. the thing with Haaland is you don't, you, don't want, you don't want to take that risk. Man. You don't want to take that risk at all. It's, it's too risky. It's too risky, <laughs> right? It's too, it's, I know, even though I'm back in Wolf, but I know Haaland can, you know, 15 minutes, hat trick, and then that is it. He can do that. If you watch, if you watch the game against Dortmund, I was like, this guy is just a striker that we haven't seen in a long time. Like, the goal he scored... They, uh-huh. they they marshaled him the whole game. Just one chance that he got. He like it. a normal striker cannot score that goal. It's like a I don't know a karate kick or whatever. <laughs> <it is. laughs> the guy is exceptional. To be honest, I don't like to hate on my my opponent, but uh, he's yeah. a, a good he's exceptional. Striker. But yeah. but again, you say you say uh, yeah, it's a big risk, right? But if if what if I went with it and then he blanks, that would be massive for me, right? I mean, it, it's it's good for your mental health that you went with, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, instead of watching the game and you're always, you know, any, any notification that goes on your phone, you're looking, hey, is that the score? How oh, did this score? <laughs> it's, it's but I can't deal with those silly things. Like, to be honest, personally, I think for me, uh, those things don't really... He does he score? Okay, I guess go and do it. But, but if you think if you think he's not going to score, then I think you should go with somebody else. Maybe Isaac should be fine. No, the, the, the problem is the problem is Son did not inspire in the midweek. If Son had inspired, then definitely Son would have been in that middle. Then I have KDB mm. and Son. Then I have something different, and I have Kane up top. Yeah. Then, ha- yeah. but right now, if you if if I remove Haaland, where do I spend the money? To who? 
He has a lot of money, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's team, a lot of right? money I have. So it's better <clears> I just spend it on him and just you know just don't captain him. I will captain Kane instead. You know. Okay. Yeah, but it seems like a solid team. I think uh, maybe like you said, maybe one or two changes, but I think this is the team that everybody should be free hitting to. Yeah, but the uh, exact one I will consider it. I will I consider yeah, I like consider to, that, to I, mean. I think um I like that idea because I haven't thought about it to be honest. So because I was just thinking Mitrovic has been on form, so just ignore Mitrovic. But you are right. I think I can do something different there. Isaac have the better fixture. He played one more, two, a worse defense. Even though Nottingham Forest are bad defensively. Yeah, bad defensively Mitrovic, too, plays, yeah. Mitrovic plays away and Isaac mm. plays at home. So only that should, you know, put it in Isaac's favor. But yeah, I will consider it to be honest. Okay, so let's go to my, my wild card team. Yeah, not, so not wild card. Sorry, my, <laughs> not, not wild card. My, my, my two free transfers. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. think I've changed. I've changed. I've changed. There's just one change. Uh, I didn't give you the latest one. Um, yeah. So right now I have. Um, let me just call it out uh, differently here. I have Ward. <laughs> Goalkeeper doesn't inspire confidence. He's, uh-huh. He doesn't have. I don't have a choice. <laughs> He's the only one that I have. I don't. If I get zero point from him, it's fine. I don't care. To be honest, no, just not negative one. That's fine. So Ward, I have um, Gabriel in defense. Uh, Nico Williams and Trippier. So uh, Trent has left and Trippier is in. Um, in midfield, I have Andreas Pereira, um, Martinelli, Bailey, and then uh, Salah has left and then Foden is in. <laughs> so some rash, yeah, really out of the box uh, changes here. And up top, I have Haaland captain, boss, uh, boss team captain right now. I have uh, Gabriel Jesus and I have Tony. So I have eleven. I have eleven players which I need to win this week. So let's see how it goes for me. No, um, no. what do you think about my last, my 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 out of the box thinking or changes that I've made so far? So, uh, who comes in for James again? I missed that part. If he's still there, he's on the bench. He's on the bench. <laughs> yeah, who comes in in his place to start? Who do you bring in? Trippier. Trippier is in. Yeah, Trippier wow, is in. Trent. Okay, mm-hmm. Trippier is in for it. So you have Trippier, uh, Nico Williams, and Gabriel. Uh, 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 Andreas, Martinelli, Bailey, and Bailey, Foden. Foden. Mm-hmm. And then up top, you have, uh, yeah, to, to be, yeah, apart from uh, Ward, I don't see any problem. Um, mm-hmm. like Andreas, I was considering starting him if I was to go like for me, <laughs> like having Kane, Son, like KDB, and uh, and Haaland. I, 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 I drafted that team to be, actually, I had both all four of them. But that was gonna in- include Andrea, so I will have started him. So I don't mind starting him against Tottenham Forest, and he has done well when we put him on our bench. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's a good pick. Yeah, yeah. The only, the only yeah. worry is Ward. Apart from Ward, I think you are. I think the, and, is the and, only and, one. Yeah. And like for you, you don't care about the goalkeeper, so no. you just have your two points. That is enough, <laughs> right? But if you have a player to save there or here or there, so I I think yeah, it's for a minus four, right? Or no. Mm-hmm. no. No, 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 minus. This is just two, two transfers. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Then, then I think it's a solid. I, I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a very, very solid team. And um, you don't really, you kind of get the team right, right? Even without, without the wild card, without the free hit like myself. Yeah, you have been managing very well. <laughs> I hope they, I hope they do well, man. I hope they do well. Um, the, the only, the only letdown, the what I have is like I said, uh, Salah and Trent. But then I'm gonna wild card. Uh, exactly. in nine that is the plan but now i have to really think about it because there's a there's a, a gap in 12 and i have three arsenal and i have two man city so i have to start like maybe yeah, getting them out gradually or wild card and then only have one arsenal play, play instead. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah yeah the fact that you know what's going to happen down the line mm-hmm. and you it know, helps you, yeah it helps it helps a lot you have the wild card you can plan and have mm-hmm. two players and then gradually as you approach that one you can you know like face them out except maybe one mm-hmm. or two of them who you can bench actually because you have three spots on your bench so you can mm-hmm. bench them sometimes too you know just for that particular week and then the game, if, yeah. especially Man City yeah. Arsenal I think they have a bad run Um, so maybe it is sensible to sell them except for Martinelli and for, for Martinelli it's his value for me that is very important mm-hmm. he will need that value somewhere down the line so it's better to to keep him but yeah, yeah, I think you can manage that with the wild card, and yeah, you will not have any, you will not have much problem with that with that game, especially that now you you settle this one very well. Yeah, mm. not good, not bad. Yeah. Um. So we've come to the end of the pod. Anything that we forgot to discuss, Chang? Um. 
I think we covered everything. And um, yeah, just wish people luck and wish me luck. Uh, yeah, least... wish <laughs> good, good luck on your free hit team, man. I think, I, I think it's a, it's it's um it's strange to use a free hit now, but I think your you the position that you were in, I think it's better to use it um, because if it works well, it's gonna really work well for you, and you will actually kind of recover those points and then you know uh, get back to the same level that you need to get to. Exactly, and actually, yeah. I I did not you know I did not give the idea why. <clears throat> I use the free hit, you know, it's, it's quite important that you mentioned that. Um, because yeah, I already used my wild card in game week two. That was, um, bad thing. I don't know, <laughs> but the free hit, the reason why I decided to use it this week was because of the trickiness or the, the complexness of, of, of the fixtures. Um, I am of the belief that, uh, Liverpool players will get back to their best. I am of that belief, right? Maybe that is because I'm a fan of Liverpool, but maybe because because of, of the repetition that they have built for themselves. Trent, Salah, these are players I think they will do well. Um, game week in game week, um, you know we don't talk too much about the fixtures. Maybe it's, it was good you brought this thing up. In game week, uh, game week nine, Liverpool have a very good fixture, decent fixture, not the very good one because uh, you cannot say Brighton is a very good fixture because they have been doing they have been one of the best teams in the league so far but the fact that they have lost their manager makes it even better for Liverpool in game week 9 mm. they play Brighton and in that particular week you look at a team like Manchester City they play Manchester United which is mm. a derby mm -hmm. so you don't know how it's going to pan out you look at a team like Tottenham uh, they play they play Arsenal which is another derby so all the players you target uh, like the players you, you you're gonna get, like the wildcard play teams are gonna get. They have they difficult have, fixtures. They have difficult fixtures, and mm -hmm. because they are wildcarding this week, they're gonna get rid of the Liverpool players, right? Every anybody who's wildcarding, either you you cannot put Salah started million on your bench. That's why people are wildcarding. It's too hard, no or you way. sell him, right? So for mm -hmm. your case, you can bring him back in because you have the wildcard. But for those managers who wildcarded, I have an advantage over those players because they cannot get Salah back next week unless they have a plan for it in place. So if mm. you cannot, so you ha already have an advantage. For me, I will have three Liverpool players in that particular fixture. When Liverpool, compared to the other premium teams, they have the best fixture on paper. So I have three Liverpool players. And I am of the belief that Liverpool will improve. That game is at Anfield. Mm. So I am of that belief that they will come back to their best. And if that's the case, then that is a week I can capitalize and you know take advantage of those players, of those managers who use their white card to get rid of the Liverpool players. Mm. So... My free hit depends on Liverpool doing well next week too. Not just what I have this week, but Liverpool players doing well next week. Yeah, that's a, that's a good explanation to it. I think it, it makes sense for you, for your team, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, we've come to the end of the pod. Um, thanks for listening, guys. Um, you are the Kutu Classic FPL podcast. Tama, any last words to take us out? To yeah, yeah, guys, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button on the Yellow Football mm -hmm. Bantaba YouTube channel to help this go to classic podcast and other podcasts on our, you know, on our YouTube channel grow. And um, yeah, good luck. And uh, hopefully we will be smiling next week. <laughs> hopefully, yes. That uh, Well, we hope there are no more cancellations because things are getting more intense now. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks for listening, guys. Um, always supporting the pod um we'll catch you guys on the next one